every child. Welcome back. I'm in the studio with the Banking Association of South Africa's Head of Strategy and Communications. And uh, he is one of the key role players in the Injula Meti scenario planning, Dr. Yakub Abba Omar. And we're talking about the process that you followed. But, you know, you can, you can do all the scenario planning mm -hmm. you like, but you've got to work with what you have right. on the ground. You are responding to a situation here. What is your analysis and, and the sense you're getting from other stakeholders, thought leaders on this matter? What, what is going on in South Africa right. from your point of view? Right. Um, I think you know, the, the exercise itself, um, I think it's probably the best cutting edge research you've got available about the state of our nation today. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is it, it's uh, involved so many different role players. So you know, we didn't keep it as an elite exercise. So for once, we've got about a 15% representation of unemployed, which is unheard of when we have these kind of exercises. We have a very large representation of both urban and rural-based youth. We use very f nice techniques to bring their voices into the conversation. And then what we d then did was we identified what are the variables that will be impact on the future of that question of social cohesion in South Africa. We arrived at about 25 variables. We researched them. We've had papers commissioned and so forth. And there were some that were really surprising. You know, uh, like for example, we didn't, you know, it, it didn't even feature with the earlier discussions, but one was uh, the issue of human trafficking within South Africa. Mm, mm. Um, you know, we th uh, that's interesting, and it was coming from rural respondents, especially young people, who were saying that you know the people are disappearing in the communities and villages. And I think now, when you start hearing the stories of bodies found, mm. or you know, uh, it's not just sex uh, trafficking, but it's like an uncle and an aunt that has a construction project somewhere get some young guys from their home village and get them to work there, and then they hardly ever return back to the village. So these are the kinds of issues that came up. Obviously, the normal ones of work, the impact of the fourth mm. industrial revolution, mm. uh, the future of constitutionalism, the future of civil society, all those kinds of also emerge, but they're also surprising things. From that 25, the exciting part, and I think this is where there's a lot of uh, echo with the rest of the conversation, Three key drivers were, invited, uh, were identified that impact on the future of South Africa. The first one was social inequality. Mm. The second one was institutional capacity and leadership. And the third one was what we started calling the three R's, uh, reconciliation, resistance, and resentment. Now, as you know, with the reconciliation, resistance, people are feeling, well, some pe there are some winners, some losers. Black people may be feeling not enough was done to address the legacy of the past. White people are saying, well, you know, these blacks are getting away with too much. Indians, coloreds, you know, to use these old terms, are mm. you know, feeling, well, you know, they're not sure whether they're really benefiting mm. or not. The institutional capacity thing, often we focus on the state, which is obviously important, but we're saying the leadership issue is across the board. Whether you look at trade unions, you look at political parties, the churches, mm. the media, etc., there's a lack of broad lack of strong leadership that goes beyond corporate It is interests. said that actually there was a time when the church was looked up to for moral leadership yes. in our society, but today it's not really a place you, a, yeah. you look to for that kind of direction. Unfortunately. But yeah. now, we, we have the economic challenges, right. high unemployment rate, which impacts people feel it, right. and the fact that uh, services, public services are not being delivered when they should be delivered. Right. Money is allocated for that, but it never reaches the people. Right. People are very much unhappy. Mm. And, uh, and, and of course, the business people see their businesses shut down. They are not able to grow. They are also unhappy. Yeah. What then do we need to do? What mm. kind of scenarios are you painting them. There are right. three distinct ones yes, that you've yeah. identified yes. on the basis of those uh, uh, drivers. Uh, of those, uh, drivers. Yeah. And I actually like the, the names. Yeah. So one is called Is Bourgeois. Yeah. You <laughs> must explain what that is. <laughs> and there's one called Nai Le Walk and the, the Guara Guara. Guara yeah. So there are three <laughs> distinct different. At right. least we can imagine them. Yes. But let's start with, let's start with uh, Is Bourgeois. Okay. What do you mean by that? Mm. I'm glad you said explain them and I mustn't die Dance there, because obviously the names have been taken from popular dancers, yes. and uh, you know this is the nice thing about having young people involved in the project. They're the ones who came up with the names, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, the, we were kind of looking at the names of trees and yes. names of birds, and, that kind of thing, and they said, "No, let's do something exciting yeah. and different." Yeah. 
So you know, in the if you look at the website also, we're using the dance forms to depict the scenario. Mm. So it's a bourgeois is a scenario where you know the levels of inequality keep increasing. Uh, some people say you know it's a status quo kind mm. of continued mm. into 2030. Um, but you know no no situation is ever static. So actually it does get bad. Um, and what happens is that we're creating uh, a, a bigger sort of middle class uh, who have jobs, who have medical uh, private medical care, and then they're able to get better education, etc. So, and that includes people that are in the trade unions and so forth, but they get included into a certain enclave, mm. and then the poor get excluded out of that mm. enclave, but they create their own enclaves yeah. as well. So we call this Isi Bourgeois Nation. It's actually two nations mm. uh, that continue. Uh, and at one level, the poor have realized, look, they can't trust, they can't depend on the state for delivery. Uh, so we, you know, we use the term the poor maka plan mm. instead of the boor maka mm. plan. It's the mm. poor maka plan, and they start getting on with providing early childhood development programs mm. within their streets. Mm. Uh, they make sure their children are better educated. So those people who have had some education that are retiring, the gogos that are now post teaching, post schools are being to go back into, mm. and that's what Isi Bourgeois is about. And then the Naile walk. Naile walk. Um, you know, when you're doing scenarios, uh, you're not supposed to say which one you prefer. Yeah. But so everyone says, you know, this is the sort of uh, uh, scenario that you know is the good scenario. We try and make sure all scenarios people consider all three scenarios mm. and plan for them. Mm. But the Naile walk, uh, as the name again says, it's watching a very uh, well synchronized mm. walk, you mm. know, because as you know, the dance uh, itself, you can do it on your own, <laughs> but it doesn't look great because mm. it's actually a group dance mm. with people dancing together and so forth. So we're saying essentially that, uh, you know, there is a strong government post-2019. It takes charge. Um, it, bring, it begins uh, putting on track a lot of the issues that need Sure. The sorting of the and mining the charter. And, and, and then so the Guara Guara? Guara Guara one, again, it's a dance form uh, with one leg that is held firmly to the ground mm. and the other one's moving mm. around. That's one where things go really bad. Um, you know, the post well, people who love that dance shouldn't hold it against you. You do yeah. not need <laughs> <one>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll think, why are you doing that? Yeah. Why single that one that out? One out. <laughs> But it's basically trying to show that there is a frenetic movement in one part of the nation yeah. and the rest is being held down yes. badly. So gangsterism prevails. Uh, as you know, there's so many large parts of our country, actually dystopia, yes. drug uh, gangs, criminals running the place, etc. Okay. We are where we are now, sure. right? We know the problem. Right. And then we've got the political parties. Right. Once in, this, in the South African context, we still depend on politics to solve the problem. Right. But the political leadership in the country at the moment, and the way it goes about addressing all of the things, the drivers that you mentioned, and right. the things that might lead us to any of those scenarios, mm -hmm. what, what do you think is, is happening right. uh, in terms of the political formations and the leadership thereof? Right. One, two, the issues that are being raised. Right. The, the, the problem of social cohesion yeah. does not seem to matter to a lot of, or some of the leaders. Mm -hmm. Then you have the, 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 the framing of the land question right. or debate itself yeah. also yeah. Uh, seems irreconcilable at this time, but it's something that needs to be resolved. Right. And the exclusion yeah. economically continues. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the different scenarios show different ways that these issues have been resolved. But what we're doing is that it, since the f completion of the scenarios in June, we've been presenting it to we've presented to all the political parties, we're presenting it to corporates, we've been presenting it to the SACC run uh, conversations. We've had uh, a Western Cape launch, an Eastern Cape launch, and we're raising one key question: whether you're in a political party, even if you're an individual or some uh, little football club or the other, we're saying if we don't, we're not saying choose one of the scenarios, we're saying if one, if any of those scenarios come true, uh, do we have the right strategies to avoid the negative mm. aspects mm. and exploit the positive aspects? Because we want to obviously move in a positive future. Then people must review their strategies and say, you know, this isn't the right thing that we're doing. We should do this, this, this. And then people who want to engage with the whole yes. process, how do they do yeah. that? So it, it, uh, the, the quickest way is to get onto a website, yeah. uh, SA Scenarios 2030, and write to us if you want a presentation. 
but there's lots. The presentation, the booklet, if I may show yeah, as well, so. which I'm leaving a copy yeah, for yeah, you, thank you, is on the website. But also, if you want a presentation, we've got about a dozen people that are now able to come and present, run mm. workshops. So if you want a quick 45-minute, one-hour presentation available, if you want, what we prefer is a half-day or all-day workshop with the organization to review your strategies against the scenarios. We, in fact, we call it wind tunneling your strategies mm -hmm. against future scenarios. I understand you, Dr. Yakub Abba Omar. The point you're making is all of us must be careful of the choices we make because they will yield certain consequences. The ones we choose today. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So yeah. whatever choices you make and mm. as you look at what's going on around you, remember that that carries certain cons consequences and as well as w the way we go about holding those in charge accountable. Yep. You choose. Is Pudra, Naile Walk, Guara Guara. It's your choice. Absolutely. And thank you very much. Thank you very for much. For having been our guest. Thank you for being and here. And that's Dr. Omar, and uh, he was talking to us about the South Africa's Inculamity scenarios. After the break, we will be focusing on higher education with Professor Jonathan Janssen. Don't go away. <laughs>